Okay, friends, we are continuing today on the theme that we began to build on yesterday, looking at the last night of Jesus' life. We talked yesterday about this just theme of a downward trajectory that Jesus chooses for himself. When he could have chosen to elevate himself, chooses to go uh, lower and lower, uh, knowing that by lowering himself, he's lifting others up. What we'll see here is the story of one of his disciples who follows in a similar trajectory, but not willingly, and in fact ends up at his rock bottom, not because he is humbling himself, um, not because he's doing something for the good of others, but he ends up at his rock bottom because of a mistake that he makes. Um, so we're going to look at Peter's story here. So we're going to walk through it, talk about it, and then I'll draw a couple of conclusions about it uh, after that, including giving you some additional resources to dig into this a little bit more, something we're going to be doing at the church starting next month. Okay, so uh, Jesus is um, not yet in the pit. Jesus has gone through this mock trial, and now the focus shifts to what's going on with Peter, because remember, Peter followed him there. Now, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, you also are with Jesus, the Galilean. Where Galilee is the region that Jesus grew up in in Nazareth. And the region that he did most of his ministry in is the region that Peter is from. And for me, I tend to think of all of kind of the ancient world as kind of the same. I certainly think of all of ancient Israel as the same, but it doesn't take you long to realize the different regions within Israel would have been very, very different. The way that the different regions within the United States are very, very different. So it would be like if, you know, you're at a house party in Manhattan and there are two people with deep, like, Texas accents. You're going to assume that those two people know each other, right? This is what's going on here. So you also are with Jesus the Galilean. Maybe she had seen him. Um, maybe it's because she could tell that he himself is Galilean. But regardless, she puts... Peter and Jesus together. He denied it before them, saying, I don't, I don't know what you mean. You'll remember that Jesus predicted this. I don't know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. So she saw them together. And again, he denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. He doubles down on this deal. You'll not be surprised he's about to triple down on it. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. So, you know, we, we didn't see you, but clearly, like, like y'all must know each other. There aren't a whole lot of Galileans hanging around uh, uh, in Caiaphas' house. I don't know the man. Um, well, and he invoked a curse on himself and to swear I don't know the man. Three times, as Jesus predicted. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus. He had just said this. Before the rooster crows, uh, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Earlier that night that Jesus said that. And it was a million miles from Peter's mind earlier that night that he would ever have the ability to do that. He... he I don't think that when he said to Jesus, I'm never going to roll over on you, that he had his you know, fingers crossed behind his back. He, he meant it. Full conviction. He wasn't lying when he said, I'll never betray you. He, he meant it. He just didn't know how hard it would be to actually follow through on that promise. And then in the moment, he wasn't able to do what he wanted to do. Have you ever been in that moment? You don't do what you want to do? I mean, that, that's Peter here. He's not willingly betraying Jesus in the sense that he thinks that this is the right idea. He's just terrified. Think about everything that he's just seen. And, and think, remember, he's there to see the end. He knows what's going to happen to Jesus. And he is well aware of this, and this is true, that him owning that he knows Jesus will not help Jesus. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe if, you know, if they had said to him, you know, if you know him, like, we're going to get him out of here. I mean, maybe Jesus, maybe Peter would have... Peter knows that Jesus is doomed, and he knows that if he gets associated with him, that he, he may very well be doomed. Also, 
But when he remembers what Jesus said, he wept. He went out and he wept bitterly. This is like the rock bottom. This is the low point. I mean, this man Jesus has been his rabbi for three years. He's followed him. He's pledged to, to, to go in the way that he goes to try to be like him. He has seen the things that this man has done. And Peter must be mortified with himself that he has the ability to do this. He must be, be, be shocked. I mean, he had just said with full conviction, I'll, I'll never do this. He, he said for a million different reasons, including, have you ever had one of those moments where you do something that you didn't realize you were capable of? I think that's this for Peter. He didn't realize that he was capable of doing this. And then all of a sudden, not only does he realize that he is capable of it, but he actually, he does it. So I think this is a good place for us to sit. This is not an upper, just like yesterday was not an upper, for a place for us to sit and say, okay, what are those kind of rock bottom moments for us? What are those, those places that, that we hit and we say, I don't want to go any lower, lower than this. And you know if you know the end of the story, even if you don't know the end of the story, you can kind of assume where this is going. I mean, not in Matthew. Matthew doesn't um, account for this. I think this is the last time Peter's mentioned, I think. Um, but in John, we see that, that this relationship is put back together. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, you know that, that, that Peter is going to be redeemed. But at this moment, he probably doesn't feel that way. Uh, he probably feels like, this, 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 is, this is bad and it can't be and it can't be fixed. What are those kind of rock bottom moments for you? And do you know that as bad as it is, that it, that it can be redeemed, that it can be fixed? Yeah, that's for another time, but for today, like what are those rock bottom moments for you? Okay, a couple things to reflect on. A couple, a couple uh, like, things to wrap up. One, um, Peter is redeemed. He ends up getting filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and becomes just this force of nature for the kingdom. We read about that in Acts. After that, he writes to many different churches. We have two of those letters. One of them we call 1 Peter. And in 1 Peter 3, 17, what he says to, uh, to those he's writing to is, hey, you should always be ready to give an account for the hope that is within you. Now, there's more to it. I would recommend highly that you go read 1 Peter 3. I think it's like 16 through 18, the general area. 317 is that part that I just quoted. Um, go, go, and, go and read it. And then ask yourself, why does Peter go out of his way to tell people, hey, my advice to you is that you be ready to give an account for the hope that is within you. That you be ready to speak about who Jesus is and what he has done. I think that he had the conviction to say that to the people that he was writing to because he wasn't ready. Jesus had warned him. He said, Peter, you're, you're going to fall into this temptation. He had said, I know that your uh, spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Jesus had, had told him, but he still wasn't ready. And he's saying to people, and I think by extension, he's saying to us, be ready. There could be a huge moment of trial like, like, like this, where you're kind of on the spot, and it would maybe cost you something to, to own your faith. Be ready for that. Maybe less dramatic than that. Maybe that a friend comes to you suddenly one day out of the blue and asks you, why, why do you believe this Jesus stuff? Be, be ready. Be ready to give an account of the hope that is within you. Here's the second thing. In Cornerstone, um, beginning on August 29th, we're going to spend five weeks looking at Peter's story. I cannot wait for this. Five weeks looking at Peter's story. And really digging into one core conviction, and that is that God's grace is greater than our greatest regrets. Our greatest regrets. Like, you want to know how deep God's grace is? Think about how deep your regrets are. How deep your sin is. How deep your brokenness is. Think about how deep that is. God's grace is deeper than that. That's how deep God's grace is. So his grace is greater than our greatest regrets. We're going to talk more about... Um, 1 Peter um, 3.17 and what it looks like to prepare uh, to give an account of the hope that's within you. We're going to talk more about this night that we've talked about. We're going to talk about that 
uh, morning that I alluded to in John 21 when things are put back together. Um, we're going to talk about um, who Peter was at the beginning and how he grew into the disciple that he was. We're going to go through Peter's story. I cannot wait for that. <clears throat> it's going to kick off uh, the fall for us in Cornerstone and will be the first of nine core convictions, core truths that we're going to talk about this school year. Nine we're called cornerstones. Nine cornerstones, things that we believe and things that you can build your life on, core convictions that you can build your life on. So on the 22nd in Cornerstone, I'm going to introduce this idea of what we're going after with cornerstones for the um, for the whole school year. On the 29th, we're going to start Peter's story. So I hope that you'll be involved in that. I know that most of you who are doing this Bible study are also um, involved with our church as a whole, either in the sanctuary or in Cornerstone. Uh, if you're not, I'd encourage you to, to jump in either in person or online. And we'd encourage you to check out um, what we're going to be doing in Cornerstone for the next school year. Okay. God bless you. Hope you have a good weekend. And next week, we're wrapping this, this deal up, right? Uh, we are going to continue to look at um, uh, this last little bit of, of Jesus' story. The crucifixion, and then obviously the, uh, the, the great punchline at the end that nobody would have seen coming. That empty tomb. God bless you, friends, and I'll see you next week.